Hey, welcome everybody to Ocean, Atmosphere, and Climate Lesson 1.2. Uh, what determines the air temperature of a location? So you just took the critical juncture assessment. Uh, hopefully that gave you kind of a preview of where we're headed in the unit. Um, we're going to be talking about what are some of the things that determine the climate of a place. Um, the first thing that we're going to be getting into is temperature, as you can see from the title of today's lesson. Um, so we've got a few questions uh, just to kind of get us into this. We're going to watch a video today, um, and uh, we're going to explore the simulation today. Um, again, more really just kind of to get us thinking, um, we are going to look at some claims and uh, try to answer a question uh, that's going to guide us through um, Chapter 1. So let's go start with a warm-up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. It says comparing average temperatures. Compare the average annual, a, annual annual temperature for each of the two cities shown on the map and answer the questions below the image. So as you can see, we have these two uh, cities right here. We have Anchorage, Alaska with an average annual temperature of three degrees Celsius. All right. Uh, Christchurch, New Zealand with an average temperature, annual average temperature of 11 degrees Celsius. Now, which one's warmer? <sighs> New Zealand, right? Christchurch, New Zealand. I mean, it's, it's significantly warmer than Anchorage, Alaska. Okay, so here's the question. What ideas do you have about what makes Anchorage, Alaska cooler than Tri Christchurch, New Zealand? Why, why would this place be so much colder than this place? Whatever you got, go ahead and throw your answers down in the warm-up. Um, think about that for a second and uh, then come on back to me. Really curious to hear what you came up with. Just some of your initial thoughts about why, um, yeah, New Zealand, Christchurch, New Zealand would be so much warmer than Anchorage, Alaska. I've got some thoughts of my own. Um, hey, next, what you're going to do is you're going to watch this video um, called Chasing El Nino. Chasing El Nino, yeah. Um, and in this video, you're gonna going to be introduced to some climate scientists. You're going to see some of the uh, research. Oh, and my, my son is using his talker. Uh, you're going to be uh, seeing some of the research that they do, some of the instruments that they use, some of their tactics for finding out more information about this thing called El Nino. How many of you have heard of El Nino before? Maybe you have. Um, it, <laughs> it comes up in the news every once in a while. Uh, we hear about it. It's a uh, weather phenomenon. Uh, so, go ahead and watch this video, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about it in just a second. This video is attached to the lesson. It is also on the YouTube channel. Drake, Drake just wanted to say hi. Okay, thanks, Drake. So, what did you think about that video? Um, you know, I thought it was really interesting to see how they actually went about the work of gathering some of this information. Um, that lady that spent five weeks on uh, that tropical island, that sounds, that sounds not bad. Uh, maybe uh, climate science is in your future, so you can spend weeks at a time on a tropical, tropical island. Um, so let's talk about this really quick. Uh, one of our key terms here is climate. Uh, climate is general weather patterns over a long period of time. Now, what is the difference between climate and weather? Think about that for a second. What is the difference between climate and weather, oh, you are correct. Well, weather is actually in the definition of climate, isn't it? So when we talk about weather, we're talking about what is the atmosphere doing at one particular place in one particular time. Oh, you're funny, huh? Yeah, you're a funny guy. So like last night, the weather here where I'm at, it was incredibly stormy. There was a lot of rain. Um, there was big winds. A big branch fell right outside my, uh, my window. Um, but climate, climate is like the weather over a long period of time. What you can, what you can expect um, in a place from season to season, from year to year. Uh, just, yeah, those general patterns that you see. Okay? So we have a letter. Yes, we have been called upon once again uh, to use our scientific uh, knowledge and skills to help solve a problem. Uh, and this is uh, from the New Zealand uh, uh, Farm Council. Farm Council. So it's from Kiri Parada to student climatologists, that's you, uh, regarding influences on Christchurch, New Zealand's air temperature. Kiri says, I am the director of the New Zealand Farm Council. Our organization represents farmers in the area surrounding Christchurch. We just saw Christchurch, right, in the, uh, in the, in the warm-up. Every few years, we notice climate changes that affect the crops. During El Nino years, the air temperature is much cooler than usual, and we would like to learn why. So 
So the farmers are better prepared for these temperature changes. We are asking you, our student climatologists, to conduct some research on what determines Christchurch's air temperature, especially why it decreases during El Nino. Looking forward to working with you and hearing what you find out. Kerry, Kerry Prado, Director of New Zealand Farm Council. Well, okay. Interesting. You know, what was one of the things they said about El Nino in the video? They said the ocean temperatures change. Um, but what do they say by like half a degree, which is seemingly very small. But as we will see, those small changes can have drastic effects. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to activity three here. Uh, we've got a little uh, partner discussion. So you can go ahead and like email one of your friends, uh, chat with them. Um, or you can just answer this on your own, either way. Uh, this is our research question. During El Nino years, why is Christchurch, New Zealand's air temperature cooler than usual? So think about this. And what do we know about El Nino right now? Not much, just what we saw in the video or anything that you may have already known about El Nino. But why, why is, El, uh, during El Nino years, why is Christchurch, New Zealand's air temperature cooler than usual? Think about that first second and then uh, let's hear what you come up with all right we have three claims that we get to choose from I like it when they give us claims to choose from it kind of makes our work a little bit easier rather than having to come up with our own unique ideas we just have to choose right it's like multiple choice for short response uh, during El Nino years why is Christchurch New Zealand's temperature cooler than usual choose the claim that is most similar to your idea you just thought about this uh, your response does not need to be the same as your partners obviously um, this is why Christchurch New Zealand's air temperature is cooler than usual during El Nino years. We have three options. The first one, the amount of incoming energy from the sun changes. Hmm. Okay, uh, claim number two, something about Earth's surface, land or water changes. And claim number three, something about the air changes. Which of those goes most along with, aligns best with what you had already thought? Okay, next, we're gonna jump into the simulation. Exploring the ocean, atmosphere, and climate simulation. Launch the ocean, atmosphere, and climate sim. Work with your partner to become familiar with the uh, features of the simulation. When you make a discovery about the simulation, be sure to share it with your partner. Let's go ahead and open that up right now. Here we go. Ocean, atmosphere, and climate. What's my hair doing back there? I'm gonna retie that. It's coming out of my, my man pony. I have a haircut scheduled. I know, you're welcome. Whoa, look at this, all sorts of stuff that we can do with this simulation. Oh man, all sorts of options. I can do air surface, play. Okay, this is normal, like playing, running the sim, time, looks like a reset, all of this, all of this different stuff that I can do. So again, what you're gonna be doing is you are just playing with some of those controls, all right? Then what you need to do is you actually have a task. Uh, you, it says with your partner, but I want you to do both of these things. Find a way to make the air temperature increase. Find a way to make the air temperature decrease. And then tell me what you did uh, in order to make those things happen. So again, in the simulation, what, what can you do to make the air temperature increase or decrease? You're, you're playing around with it, right? You don't have any instructions yet other than, hey, go try to make that happen. Um, go ahead, do that. Come back to me, and then we'll talk about this. We have two more uh, vocabulary terms here, energy and temperature. Hey, you know what? We've talked about these terms before. These are terms that we should be familiar with from previous units. Energy, the ability to make things, uh, to make things move or change. Um, and temperature, a measure of how hot or cold something is. And we remember, we expanded our understanding of temperature from our thermal energy unit, didn't we? We said that temperature is not just, you know, how hot or cold something is, but it has to do with the molecular uh, motion, how, how fast, the average speed of the molecules in something. Um, so, refresher, good refresher on these terms because we're gonna be using them uh, as we go throughout this unit. Let's look at the homework. You have a reading to do. Uh, reading, effects of El Nino around the world. Read the introduction about El Nino and then, then choose one of the three articles to learn about the effects of El Nino in a specific Location. So everyone is reading the introduction, and then you only have to choose one of the other articles. Now, Mr. Wiggins, can I read all three of the articles? Yes, of course you can. Um, in fact, I would encourage you to do so. I hope that you would. 
um, because it will just, again, expand your understanding and your knowledge of the topic. When you are finished, press, press hand in to submit your work. Um, there you go. So we have uh, the, the articles right down here, and then you can tell me which article did you read. Did you read Drought in Pakistan, Landslides in Los Angeles, Malaria in Colombia? And why do you think it's important uh, for climate scientists to study El Nino? We talked a little bit about this. The New Zealand Farm Council said, well, we want to study it because it's going to help our farmers. What about specifically related to your article? Uh, would it, why would it be helpful to, um, to study El Nino? Okay. Hey, after that, click hand in. You're done. And I'll see you next time.